Welcome to another episode of the Michelle Tafoya podcast, Randy Weingarten. There are few people on the planet who make me as angry as Randy Weingarten. Maybe it's because my mom was a public school teacher and devoted her life to actually teaching kids. Maybe it's because this woman, Randy Weingarten, is hiding behind the public schools to sell us socialism, sell us Marxism, and make herself sound like a victim at every turn. Why am I bringing this up? Well, she's pointing at homeschooling now and kind of making fun of it, which proves the point. She doesn't really care about kids. She cares about her paycheck and her job. We will discuss next. It's time for the Michelle Tafoya podcast. So I'm cruising around the internet last night and I come across this article about Randy Weingarten. Uh, Randy Weingarten gets educated ab about exactly whom is to blame for the rise in homeschooling. Now, she is the uh, head of the American Federation of Teachers. That's the second largest teachers union in America. She's the union boss and she air she shared an article on what's behind the increase in homeschooling. To which some people responded simply, you are, Randy, you are. People want their kids out of public schools. But what she does, which is very typical of, of people of her ilk, and I'm talking about divisive people, political people, operatives, she made it sound as though people were looking down on the public schools, looking to undermine the public schools. Well, that's not exactly true, Randy. People want their kids to get a good education, and it ain't happening right now in the public schools, and there are a lot of metrics by which we know that. But let's go into this article. American Federation of Teachers President Randy Weingarten got more than she asked for after she posted an article about the rise in homeschooling in America on social media Sunday. She posted it on X a couple days ago. What's behind the increase in homeschooling? Weingarten posted on X, along with an article of the same title from Axios, which included experts attributing the rise in kids needing specialized services and the pandemic. Certainly as a parent that I was during the pandemic, I saw some things that really opened my eyes about what my kids needed, what was going on in their school, et cetera. And I communicated with so many parents. The pandemic, people say, was an opportunity for people to look behind the curtain of their schools, whether it's public or private, and find out what their kids are learning, where the priorities are. And in many cases, they're not on math and reading. They're on social studies, gender studies, critical race theory, which is not what people think it is. Anyway, some ex-users, the article goes on, however, blame Weingarten. And the agenda the AFT, American Federation for Teachers, has pushed for in education. Uh, Colin Wright, whom we've had on this show, he's an evolutionary biologist, shared an image of a gender ideology instruction used in public schools around the country. He said, I've identified the suspect, although according to them, suspects should be able to identify themselves. It's funny. Funny's funny, folks. Yeah, um, this this thing that Colin Wright shared, it's called the gen the genderbred person. <sighs> when we are focusing on kids and and looking at their identities more than their brains, we got a problem. If you tell them that their gender is more important than their ability to read, we got a problem. If you tell them that the color of their skin, the pigment of their skin will determine their futures, we got a problem. When you tell them math is racist, we got a problem. We got a lot of problems. And Randy Weingarten is one of them. Uh, the AFT previously promoted the use of a pronoun card which included a question of whether the student wanted their parents to know about their pronouns. This has led to some really sad stories in America of parents being cut out of their kids' lives, which is what that Marxist socialist movement would like. 
they would like students to depend more on teachers, more on the, the government for their livelihood, for their affirmation, then they want them to be part of their families. They don't want these kids necessarily to, to feel comfortable going to their parents who have more of a stake in these kids than anybody. I'm sorry. When, whenever Randy Weingarten posts that she loves our kids, I want to vomit. You couldn't possibly love our kids the way we love our own kids, Randy. I don't care what you say. You couldn't possibly. Because they're not yours. And I, I don't care how you identify. They're just, they're not your, you cannot identify as their parents or their family. You are a teacher's union boss and you have exposed yourself. The American Federation of Teachers has also partnered with First Book, an organization that distributes books containing gender ideology education to K through 12 schools around the country. This was never a thing when I was a kid, K through 12. We didn't have to describe our genders. We just knew. And if so, and, and you can say, oh, but what about the poor kids who were in the closet? Well, you know what? We've evolved. A lot of kids have come out of the closet. And plenty of studies show that a lot of these kids grappling with their gender ideal or their gender identity eventually wind up just discovering that they're gay. Why are the schools wanting to be the arbiters of this teaching? Let's call it what it is, this indoctrination. Here at school, you get to decide who you are, and we won't tell your parents if you don't want. I mean, that. if I'm a parent hearing that, if I heard that at my kid's school, if I found out this, I'd yank him out so fast. Fortunately, haven't heard that yet. I do know there are plenty of children on my kid's campus who identify as other than the gender they were born with. That I don't have a problem with that. That is fine. This is not transphobia, people. This is asking you not to shove your ideology down the throats of children before their brains are fully developed. I go back to that so often. I want to give you an idea of what this student uh, introduction card looks like. It has the government name. I don't know what that means. Uh, name you would like to be called in class. Oh, your government, your government name. In other words, your given name is your, they have it on here as your government name. How about the name your family gave you? Holy crap, I just noticed this. Government name. Government name, so you'd put in your name. Name you would like to be called in class. In my kid's case, they shorten their names. Pronunciation tips, okay. Can I call you this name outside of class, yes or no? Pronouns, some examples. He, him, they, them, she, her. May I use these pronouns in front of the class, yes or no? May I use these pronouns when I contact home? Yes or no. May I use these pronouns in front of other teachers? Yes and no. Would you like me to follow up? Uh, would you like to follow up with me about your name or pronouns? Yes or no. Tell me three other things about yourself. This could be interesting facts, hobbies, things you want me to know about you. So you got a government name. You get to pick your pronouns because, you know. You can be whatever you want. And now they're telling kids they can be all kinds of things. Uh, and then um, if you don't want me to use these when I contact home, I won't. Your parents don't have to know. And would you like to follow up with me about your name or pronouns? In other words, should we talk privately about this? Do you want me to get in touch with you directly? Dozen, when she posted this thing about homeschooling on X, dozens of comments flooded in blaming Weingarten for parents opting out of the public school system. She's saying, what's behind the move to homeschooling? You are, said John Gabriel, the editor-in-chief of Ricochet, a conservative news site, as the answer for the increase in homeschooling. Manhattan Institute constitutional expert Ilya Shapiro, who's been a guest on this show, 
said Weingarten was also responsible for the increase in support for school choice. <laughs> yeah, more people are supporting school choice now. Thank you, Randy. I guess that's a good thing. Quote, this is Ilya Shapiro. The policies you've advocated, COVID-related and otherwise, just like you're behind much of the increased support for school choice and educational freedom. Congratulations, he said. Oh, after saying the answer is in your mirror at Randy Weingarten, Town Hall columnist Phil Holloway questioned why Weingarten turned off replies to her post. Are you afraid of the answers you'll get, he asked. You and the teacher unions, teacher unions, with help from former CDC director Rochelle Walensky, sent public schools into a death spiral from which they may never recover, he said. Pastor Jesse Johnson of the Emmanuel Bible Church echoed that same question. This tweet is ironic at like six levels, but here's another. A person touted as the country's top teacher asks a question, then turns off replies to keep people from answering it. That same, uh, that sums up pedagogy in public schools right now. No matter what you think of this pastor, he, he's exactly right. I'll ask you a question, but your answers must comport with mine. Otherwise, we'll mute you. A right-leaning organization responded in kind, mocking Weingarten as an advocate for homeschooling. Quote, homeschooling is now the fastest growing form of education in the U.S. Randy still doesn't realize she is one of the greatest homeschool advocates in American history. Young Americans for Liberty posted. The director of the Independent Women's Forum, Ginny Gentle, uh, I think it's Jenny, Ginny Gentles, blamed what she deemed to be an anti-parent agenda. A lot of people feel this way. She said, what's behind the increase in homeschooling? Well, Randy, with unions and activists pushing school districts to craft policies that assume parents are abusers, it's time for families to find healthy and safe alternative education options. So Randy's answering her, you know, she's getting the answer she, she asked for, except that she turned them off. Um, I, I want to give you, if you if you aren't familiar with Randy Weingarten, I want to give you a sample here of how she communicates publicly. Keep in mind, she's the president of the American Federation for Teachers. She claims to love all children, to want them to have great public schools. But she also wants everyone else to pay for everyone else's college. And this is just one of the uh, activist positions that she takes. And her form of communication is simply, if I'm loud enough and I swing my arm enough, I'll make my point. I'm going to ask John Berg, my producer, to roll a bit of this from when she was standing up for student loan forgiveness. Go ahead, John. And so that is why President Biden said we are going to deal with that as we deal with the end of the pandemic. We're going to deal with that. We're not going to start student debt again without actually making a down payment of it. And the Secretary of Education has the right to do it. And frankly, and this is what really pisses me off, during the pandemic, we understood that small businesses were hurting. And we helped them. And it didn't go to the Supreme Court to challenge it. Big businesses were hurting, and we helped them, and it didn't go to the Supreme Court to challenge it. All of a sudden, when it's about our students, they challenge it, the corporations challenge it, the student loan lenders challenge it. That is not right, that is not fair, and that is what we are fighting as well when we say, cancel student debt. Oh my this gosh. Okay. You can turn it people, off, please. I'm getting another headache. Um, cancel student debt. Yeah. Cancel student debt. Yes. Uh, when it's unconstitutional, something should be brought to the Supreme Court. It should be challenged. When a president, not the Congress, not the Congress, Randy, as it is in the Constitution, the Congress manages the, the money, not the president. So a president cannot unilaterally give out money. That's unconstitutional, and that's why it was taken to the Supreme Court. If the Congress decided 
to do this. That would be another story. She, she doesn't, she's a teacher with a law degree and she pretends not to understand that. She pretends not to understand that. If she doesn't understand that, that's, that's a whole nother can of worms. I think she tries to slip that one by you. See, we have three, three arms of government. If, People have, and and listen, I understand if you don't know this because civics hasn't been taught in schools for a long time. There's the administrative branch, which is led by the president. There's Congress, the House of Representatives and the Senate, and there's the Supreme Court. Those three balance each other out. They are checks and balances. It's really smart. It's genius. And when the president tries to take too much control by saying, I'm going to give away money and the Congress hasn't allowed him to, remember, it's the House of Representatives who handles the purse. And they haven't allowed him to do that. They haven't signed off on that. Then yes, people will standing and go to the Supreme Court and say, wait a minute. Are we going to let the president give away our tax dollars? The president himself make this unilateral decision? And she's saying, yeah. Uh, um, so I, I did a little more research on Randy Weingarten. Like I said, she's a lawyer by all accounts this head of the teachers union, this person who seems to understand the classroom best spent approximately three years as a full-time teacher. And maybe not even that she's on a leave of absence from New York public uh, city schools to be this officer in the American Federation for teachers. So imagine you could take a leave of office, uh, leave of absence from your government job to go do another job. And you're still gaining points toward your pension at the, at the, at the school job. Cause you're on leave. Just you're on a leave of absence. So you're racking up your pension points at the expense of the taxpayer, but you're out there yelling about this. And she goes to Ukraine because she's so necessary in Ukraine. And she's a member of the Democrat National Committee. Does she realize that half the public school students in America have Republicans for parents? Why is she so front and center with her politics when she claims to represent all children? Because she doesn't. She has an agenda. It's plain and simple. You know, following her on Twitter could actually be somewhat entertaining if you care to do that. Here's another article. The leader of one of the largest teachers unions in the United States says any criticism of her is an attempt to, quote unquote, undermine public education. Does that sound familiar? Remember when Dr. Fauci said when they criticize the science, when they criticize me, they're criticizing science because I am science. I am the science. She is saying she is public education and any criticism of her is an attempt to undermine public education. You know what, Randy? Taxpayers have been throwing more and more money all the time at public education, and it is failing in many places. How can you tell us that we're trying to undermine public education when you're doing it just so damn well on your own? Randy Weingarten, the president of the American Federation for Teachers, made the claim during the Hill's powerful Women Over 50 event last Thursday During the appearance, the union leader was asked how she copes with the, quote, loud and very public scrutiny she receives. If it was on the level, it would be different, Weingarten responded. But what we know about it is it is an intention to undermine the very institutions that help educate kids, protect democracy and pluralism in this country, and help people have a better shot at the American dream. Then why can't they read, Randy? Why can't they read? Why is math racist? Why is choice racist? As I understood it, abortion, and I'm pro-choice, that choice is not racist, but school choice is racist? Weingarten went on to note that she had previously made misjudgments in her career. Quote, but how do you actually take someone who, from April 2020, tried to reopen schools because we knew it was important, but said they have to be reopened safely so we protect everyone. How do you lie about me like that, she said. And so what I learned was they'll smear me because they're trying to create mistrust and distrust. Weingarten has previously asserted she began calling for the reopening of public schools as early as April 2020. Last month, she became the subject of a community note on X, the platform formerly known as Twitter, 
for reinforcing the claim. Community notes are X's crowdsourced approach to fact-checking. The October note attached to a post by Juan Garten said AFT has, quote, always advocated for safe reopening of schools, linked to news coverage of the union calling such actions reckless, callous, and cruel. But at the same time, many of the teachers' unions that are affiliates of her national union said, yes, we want to reopen schools, but we want to do it safely. And we want to make sure you defund the police. And we want to make sure that you do this for us and that for us. And we want to make sure you do this for us and that for us. People, if you don't believe that there is all this arm wrestling and negotiating and using of leverage and trying to uh, play tug of war behind the scenes in these legal movements, in legislation, all of that, just, it's happening. We'll give you this, but you got to give us that. And then they go, no, so I'm not going to vote for it. Oh, you're voting against puppies. You're voting against, you know, the opportunity for children to breastfeed. You're, I mean, they, they, this is how they operate. And so they are able to go in front of a microphone and say, fill in the blank, Senator, Congressman, whoever voted against puppies. Well, because the puppies were in the bill that was laden with crap. But you're going to pick out the part about puppies and say that's what that person voted against. It's it's disgusting. It's how they approach tax cuts and all the rest. If you say, I don't think we need to increase spending on such and so because we are way over budget, they're supporting slashing funding. No. They're supporting not increasing funding because we don't have any money. Or finding a way to balance or, or make up for that money somewhere else. It is, it's awful. And she is the queen of it. So like I said, I would uh, encourage you to follow her on, I, I want to see if I can find it here so I can read you um, her whole, I, I love reading people's Twitter profiles because they tell you a lot about what people think of themselves and how they want to sort of be remembered in this life. Her background says AFT, American Federation for Teachers, real solutions for kids and communities. How generic is that? And how wrong is that? Real solutions would be teach our kids to read, teach our kids how to add, prepare our kids to be strong, productive citizens of the country, prepare them for the American dream. Don't tell them that there are two classes of people, oppressed and oppressor, and that's it. That's what we've devolved to in education. It's showing its, it's it's showing its ugliness. Randy Weigart, she shows a Ukraine flag, an American flag, a, a, a strong emoji, the muscle flexing, but it's, it's black or dark brown. And then a little person with a graduation cap on it. Those are her little emojis. AFT Prez, fighting for kids and communities, democracy, public ed and health care and freedom for all. As the head of a teacher's union, your job is to fight for teachers. Your job is to put the teachers in front of your own goals. Your job is to make life for teachers good in the classroom, get them the salaries they deserve, provide them the, the resources they need to teach kids basic fundamentals, not gender ideology, not all of this Marxist crap. Just teach them to grow and thrive. Do not point out their differences unless you want to say, anyone want to share something from their family life or background that they think we ought to know? If no one raises their hand, let it be. But all of this divisiveness, this government name, holy cow. So Randy, 
Thanks for all your service. Uh, you have given public school teachers very little. You have made things tougher for them, I would argue. Some of them just can't stand that you represent them because you don't represent teaching. You represent politics. And that's not what school and education for our children should be about. Folks, be brave. Follow her on Twitter just so you know what's going on. And do good. Maybe help tutor some kids in reading, in math. I don't know. We got to counteract all the damage that's been done to our poor school kids. Ugh. Be brave, do good, and we will see you next time.